before we jump in the video today, a lot of you have noticed that YouTube's again been monkeying around with everybody's subscriptions, so we're not getting that automatic notification. I'd like to show you how to very quickly and easily fix that. Click on the subscribe button and then click unsubscribe. The red button, click it again to resubscribe and then click the little bell. Check the box that says send me all notifications for this channel, press save, and that ought to do it at least until YouTube monkeys with it again. Thanks, guys. Well, guys, this is the last of the package from Pick Me 1977. He got the last challenge lock. We'll get to that in just a minute. But I really wanted to show you this. He's probably going to shoot me for showing this off because he says he doesn't sell them. He just makes the occasional one. This is a handmade pick case. It's a little, you can fold it up. It's got an elastic on the side here. So once you get it rolled up, and this came at a perfect time because the case that I have in my car is a piece of junk. And now I have a beautiful one with my name on it. So pick me. Thank you for the beautiful case. Really appreciate it. So not only is he a gifted lock maker, he's also a gifted pick case maker. We have an SC1. He ground off the numbers. So we really can't see what we're working with here. It doesn't matter because... We're just going to pick this thing without that stinking key. Uh, it is a six pinner because I cheated and looked at the bottom here. So pretty cool. This thing's got a lot of miles on it. Let's go ahead and move my new car pick case out of the way and see if we can't pick our way into this thing. Even though it's a Schlage, I'm going to show you this before I put it in. You'll notice this thing's been, I don't know if he ground that out of there or if that's just natural wear, but usually right along the side here there's a huge piece of warding that kind of blocks things out of the way we don't have that today it's worn out of there so look like there's some dirt down in there but we'll we'll get that out put a piece of leather so we don't crush that tailpiece and I think that will do it and use the top of the keyway grab a tensioner get a nice thick one because it looks like the top of this thing is kind of wallowed out too. This is a 50 thousandths and it's still still flopping, which is kind of unusual. Usually it's a pretty snug fit, but not today. All right, that's perfect. Um, because it is a wallowed out keyway, I don't have to worry about that piece of warding. I'm going to use, this is the 23, let me see, get that focus, 23,000. This is the DeForest Diamond from the Praxis kit. Uh, we're getting caught up a little bit in something back there. Right around pin three, there's something sharp. But they're all springy, so I think we might be able to get into this thing. If not, we'll have to unwrap that key. All right. All the way in. I'm going to use heavy tension to, for the first one. Because, there we go, pin, feels like pin four. Let me check everybody else. Everybody else is springy. So let me go back to pin four. Lighten up that tension. You can only do that on the first pin, though, guys. Okay, now he doesn't want to go. I mean, so now I'm taking a chance. I'm going to loosen up on the tension wrench and see if he'll work up that way. All right, there's probably... I either overset him or there's a very sharp edge on that guy to prevent you from pushing him up. Okay, that was pin... Two. And I got a little click on him. So that tells me I made the right choice. Either that or we're caught on a spool past the shear line on pin four. We'll find out here soon enough. There we go. That was pin three. Got a nice deep fault set. So I think I guessed right. And since we have such a deep, deep fault set now, take a look at that. We're probably hung up on a waste of a spool pin. I'm going to, I got that coming out of there. I'm going to hold this with my tent, my pick and reposition that guy before he pops out on me. All right, I am looking for some kind of feedback now. By the way, I should have, should have shown you this on the tag of the key. He puts on there feedback frenzy. So that tells me that we probably do have a lot of narrow wasted pins in here. Either that or we're playing psychological warfare with Bill again, which is possible. I 
I'm getting a little feedback there on pin one. See that counter rotation? We got a lot of counter rotation. I might have just overset him. All right, we lost a little bit of. Oh, I touched pin six and we got our fault set back. Okay, I'm getting counter rotation on pin three. Got a deeper fault set, if that's possible. It was pin one again. I got a click, but no counter rotation. Okay, pin four, counter rotation. Okay, we're doing good. I see what we're talking about here, feedback frenzy. I have pretty heavy tension. I'm counting on more feedback from a something with a narrow waist, another spool perhaps, or but I'm not there we go. Very deep fault set now. This thing is really wound around there. So we're probably at this point caught up on a T pin. Or an impossible to pick spool. I really don't know which. Okay, I think I'm getting counter rotation back there on pin six, but I might be on the warding, so I'm going to take a chance. Yeah, I think it might be M. And there we go. All right, I think six is probably a T-pin, but we're going to find out. I'm going to gut this thing, and let me back this up. Yeah, I'm out. All right, get rid of that. Get us a pinning board. Get that stuff out of here. We are going to need that key. Let's take a look and make sure it works. I'm going to go ahead and lock him up. I said I was going to lock him up. I'll bet that T-pin is caught up in there somehow. Because he just doesn't want to lock. Okay, this did not come with instructions. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going to... Let me get my beater. I don't want to beat it on my, on my uh, pinning board. I'm actually going to... I, mean, I need to turn him a little bit more. So he's still open, and, and he gets to that point, and he's, he's hitting something. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn him with my fingers and then bang it here. Hopefully we can bounce those against the spring. Yeah. So there's probably a T-pin in there, and now I've just, by bouncing that and recoiling it, I allowed that cord to now relock itself. So hopefully the key works at this point. Otherwise we are hosed. Um, we got like eight pounds of uh, black nasty on here. It is a sharp knife. I don't know what to tell you. Look, look at that. How many layers we got there? My goodness. I think Pick Me did not want me to get into this key, and I don't see why. There's nothing that odd about it. A lot of high cuts on there. Okay, it does work and you can hear it. I put it next to the microphone. You can hear it snagging every time it turns past the Bible. So there is definitely something in there. It's not quite perfect, but it does work. So valid lock. Let's see if I can get that key to Go back to the 12 o'clock position. He does it. All right, take that pale piece off. Let's quit flapping our lips and let's get this thing open. Other end, you know, it's that 50-50 guessing thing. What I need is a tool with the same tip on both ends. Then I'll never have the right tool. All right, I can see in the tail there, that top one almost looks like a ball bearing from this angle. We'll 
find out in a second. Okay, let's just set him right there. Take a look here. What do we got? There is some grinding on the core, and I don't know why. I've seen this on a couple other locks. Right there, and then also on pin number six. And I don't see anything else weird about it. Now I do. There's an awful lot of threading in here. All right, we have a serrated. Another serrated. This is a homemade one. Nice deep groove in him. Serrated and that uh, and also a T pin. That's interesting technology. Another serrated. All these have one groove in them. Well, I said that, and then I pull out this guy with two grooves and a sharp edge. And the last one doesn't want. I don't know what that is. Let me get the beater in here. Number six doesn't want to leave home. All right, focus for me. I think that's just goop. Yeah, I think that's just lock goop. Yeah, piece of grease or something on there holding them in there. I thought it was something something machined in there, but we again we got a mixture of technology. We have it looks like a torpedo with a groove, sharp edge, and then a T-pin on top of it. So three technologies built into one. And on the core, we have every single chamber looks like it's threaded. Yep. It's having a little trouble looking at number six, but it is threaded and along with that slot cut in the top of there. Don't know what that's for yet, but we're going to hopefully figure it out. Let's see what uh, Pick Me's got upstairs. All right, homemade, serrated, I guess you'd call that. It's serrated with, it's very wide on the top and then narrow in the middle. So that would explain some fault sets and some feedback frenzy. Also got some grease or something on it. I didn't put anything into this lock. All right, we got another one. With a built-in T, is that a, yep, there's a pin and pin on this guy. So there's probably a wafer in the bottom of that chamber. Let's go ahead and get him. There he is, right there. And probably a tiny, tiny spring. And there he is, right on the schedule. All right, chamber three. Again, we got another one of these huge serrated guys. Homemade, very sharp edges. Any steel spring? Number four. Wow. It's going to be a really strong spring. He shot out of there like a rocket. Look at the size of this guy. Homemade spool. And look at the center portion of the spool. It's not all the same diameter. So we got that varying thickness on it. And we got a different spring on him. Let me turn this around. Let's go back. Let's go in from the other side. So we're looking for number six. Okay, another one of these feedback frenzy specials. And a spring. Doesn't want to come out of there, but he's right there, a little bit below the shear line. You can see that. And this last one. Looks like a two-parter. Um, I'm going to lay him down because the water, that part is there, and then it looks like there's even more in there. Oh, that's the spring. See, just the tip of the spring sticking up there. Look at the reflection, and it looked like another two-parter. And those springs don't want to come out. There's five. 
And six looks to be the same. He's, there he is. He was wedged up in there. All right, this guy was actually turned around like this so that the small part was up against the, the um, master wafer, and then that was against the spring to keep that little tip from going down inside of the spring. Pick me. I think I'm pretty lucky to have gotten this as quickly as I did. This is nasty. All kinds of weirdness in there. So these are all homemade on the bottom, all with the, the first four at least have grooves cut in them, and then the number three has that teep in on top. Number four, two grooves, and then the topmost uh, width on that is a little bit narrower than the rest of the pin. This guy, T-pin, kind of tapered, and then a groove. Awesome. Uh, insofar as the driver pins, this is the, the way they were oriented. So we had this guy, much narrower than the rest of the pin to flop around inside of there. Definitely give you some feedback frenzy. This guy was a pin in pin. I don't know if I can pull him out of there, but... Uh, Come on. Anyway, here's a pin and pin. There we go. Flopped out of just a piece of wire. And to keep that wire from going inside the spring, we had a master wafer. This guy also homemade. This is the wild looking spool with the tapered center. We had an upside down T pin with a wafer to keep that from going into the spring. Nasty, nasty looking. And then this guy was pointing exactly like that. One thing I probably should take a look at since. Uh, Pick Me 1977 is known to be just a little bit devious. Probably going to take a look at the core to see if any of these guys are threaded. And they are not. And there's really, without knocking those out, there's really no way to get at So this is all stock. The only craziness was inside of the core and inside of these pins. I'm trying to figure out, I'm dragging my feet here because we have two pins that kind of I was trying to look for the interaction. Why did we have these grooves cut in the top? And I really don't know why. We have a T-pin, but I can't see how that would interact with this cut on the top here. And in number four, we had a spool, and there's really no way for that spool to interact with that cut either. So I don't know if he just did that because he didn't have the correct size pin, or if this was a remnant from some other challenge lock. I really don't have a clue. Anyway, there you go. Pick Me 1977. The Feedback Frenzy. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Everybody else, stay safe, stay legal. And if you want one of these, don't bother calling him because he said he's not going to be doing it. Commercially, anyway. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.